This is going to be a little faster than the last video. If you want a longer version, the link is in the description. Uh, also, all of the links to all of this are going to be on techsyndicate.com. If this gets a little fast for you, you can just go over there and get the links and see all of the things you can do. Right now, over here on WhoKeys, you can get Windows 10 Pro, and this is the OEM CD key. The thing I like about getting the OEM CD key is you're going to pay a fraction of the price compared to buying it new in the box. This is the price that most of like the OEM builders and stuff get. It's way cheaper, and I feel like everyone should have access to the same price. I've got a coupon code for 25% off because we've got this nice March sale going on right here. One thing I want to note, the Windows 10 Pro keys are gonna they're gonna come down to like 16 bucks after we do the coupon. But this serial number will also work if you want to activate Windows 11. It's been working for a while. Um, if this video is like five years in the future, it may not work. But right now, at the time of making this video, it will activate Windows 11. So all that'll work. And note, these security features will work on Windows 10 and 11. So uh, yeah, I need the new Office right now. You can get Office 2021 if you want, but I actually like Office 2019, so I'm gonna grab a copy of that. So I'm gonna also add that one to my cart. Once you get to this page, we have a coupon code, so I'm gonna use TS25. Hit apply and watch these numbers. Look at that magic, 1614. And then Office for 4459. After you finish making the purchase, just refresh a couple times. There we go, completed. See how quick that was? Page, I'm just gonna click on View Keys and Codes. And when you scroll down, completed, just click on Get the Key right here. And then we will see our um, serial key right here. Just copy that serial key, press Start, type Activate. And you'll see uh, Activation Settings. Click on that. You're Start menu is going to look, look a little different than mine. Click on change product key, paste it here, click on next, and you're done. Windows is activated. Now you can get all of the updates, not just the uh, main security updates, which are important, but you can also uh, have full functionality with your system. Now when it comes to activating Microsoft Office, the link in the description is going to take you to where you need to go to enter your product key. Click on download now on the bottom and you can save a file and start setting up Office, but that's all you have to do. It's now locked to your account. And this is going to be great because instead of just using Microsoft 365, you can have an offline version of Office 2019, which I do like better than 2021, but you know, it's up to you. The first thing you can do in Windows, press the start button, and then you can click on your username right here, and then click change account settings. Now the first thing you'll see here, it says that Windows uh, is using a local account. If it is not using a local account, that means that you are signed in with a Microsoft account. And if you're signed onto your Microsoft account on your desktop computer, your laptop computer, and another computer, if that account gets compromised, all of those computers can be compromised. So it is always advised for security to use a local account. You may lose a few ease of life features, but it will be worth it in the long run. So if you can, click here to change to a local account. Then click on sign in options and make sure that you have a password. You have to be using a password and you need to be using a password to sign in every single time you sit down to your computer. So if you start your computer and it just goes straight into Windows, no. Go in here, click on sign in options, make sure you have a password set up. You can use a pen or any of these options that you like. Make sure, require sign-in when PC wakes from sleep. We don't want someone sitting down at our computer, moving the mouse to wake it up, and then just having full access. That's the main stuff we need to see here. All right, so that's our user account settings. Now, there's one more thing we can do with our user account that will greatly increase our security. Press Windows key R and type NetPLWiz. You might see a little checkbox here that says force this user to uh, use a password when they log in, make sure that that is checked. Mine's already automatically doing that, but uh, for some people you'll see that here. Click on advanced and then down here, there's a checkbox that says require users to press control alt delete to log in. What that'll do is when you first log in, you'll have a screen and before you can put in your password, you're gonna have to press control alt delete. And that's a great way to stop malware because sometimes malware will make a fake login screen but if you press Control alt delete then you can bypass that because it'll open up the task manager and you'll be like, wait a minute, this is not my login screen. Next up, there's a very simple thing we can do just by going through our security settings by typing 
the error, hitting the start button and typing security, and then going to Windows Security. That'll open up this panel. Now let's just go through this quickly. If you ever get a notification from Microsoft saying like, hey, security warning, you should log in to Microsoft, ignore it. It just wants you to log in so that they can track you. All right, so firewall and network, we can just check here to make sure that our firewall is on. Make sure that this is all set to on. If any of this says off, you need to click on this and turn it on. Need that turned on. And the last thing to do to lock down our user account here is press start again and type UAC. User account control settings, go there, bring it up to high, hit okay. The last thing you can do is just type update. Check for updates is what you wanna click on. It'll bring you here. And then just make sure that automatic updates are on and you're up to date. That's important. Uh, no need to upgrade to Windows 11, but all these things will work on Windows 11 as well. Internet Explorer is still tied into your internet, um, you know, internet settings. So let's hit start again and type Internet Explorer. We're actually going to open Internet Explorer. It's a quick way to get to this cog here, which allows us to go to our internet options. And from here, we have a security tab, internet. Turn that up to high. This connects to Windows as a whole, not just Internet Explorer. Local internet. You can enable that, put a check here. And then trusted sites, um, I go a little bit medium high on trusted sites and then restricted sites high. So just make sure that all these settings are on high, hit apply. So press start and type remote desktop. You don't wanna open up remote desktop, the app, you want to go down to the remote desktop settings. And if this is turned on, turn it off. Disable remote desktop, confirm. This will allow people to remotely access your computer. Only leave this on if you're doing something special in your house where you need to be able to access multiple machines from one location. And I do that here, but you don't have to have remote desktop turned on unless you're accessing this machine from another computer. So especially turn this off on laptops. You do not want people to be able to exploit and uh, have, you know, get remote desktop access. If it's turned off, they just, they're not gonna be able to get access to it. Most threats come from the outside world. And there's one way that we can really uh, cut down on the risks. And that is by running a DNS server that will automatically filter out lots and lots of garbage. I'm not gonna go into the details of what a DNS server is in this video, that's beyond the scope of this, but there are multiple different ways to do that. The easiest is to use a VPN that has its own DNS server built in. So that way, if you're going to a website that's malicious, it will just be like, nope, this website's garbage. You shouldn't even go to it. I use private internet access. It's my favorite VPN because of the price to performance ratio is really, really good. But it also has something built in. A VPN will not protect you if you're going to bad websites unless it has this feature. Under network here, we have a selection of DNSs. We can use our own DNS or we can use the PIA DNS. Now, what's going to happen when you use this you will be using their lookup server. So if you type, you know, techsyndicate.com or whatever into your browser, it's going to ask the PIA DNS server, is this a safe website? And their DNS server filters out all kinds of garbage. So when you're using this, you are far more protected than when you are just using the internet naked. If you are a little more advanced, you can get a Raspberry Pi and run something called Pi-hole. I might make a separate video about that, but you can essentially run your own DNS server at your house and filter all your traffic through that and block all the bad stuff. But this is the easiest way to do it and you should be using a VPN uh, most of the time anyway, in my opinion. So this is my recommendation, links in the description. We do have an affiliate account with them, so just so you know, but I've used them for seven or eight years now and I, I on all my computers, so I can vouch for them. especially if you're on a laptop, encrypt your hard drive. In order to encrypt your hard drive, you'll need to go into your UEFI, which means restarting your computer, pressing delete or the F2 key until you get into uh, your, your UEFI or your BIOS, and then enabling the trusted platform module. But after you've gone into the UEFI and enabled that, you can turn on BitLocker. Now, BitLocker is pretty cool because if someone were to steal your laptop and try to log in and you've got it all password protected and you've done everything else in this video, they won't be able to get in, but they can still take out the hard drive and access the data on that hard drive 
unless you're using BitLocker because BitLocker encrypts everything on the drive. So I highly recommend turning that on. Be sure that you save um, the file that you, it, it'll generate like an encryption file. Be sure you save that somewhere safe. You can even write it down on a piece of paper, print it out and hide it somewhere. As long as it's not kept in the same bag as your laptop. You don't want someone to steal your laptop and have your encryption key. Before we go on, I want to remind everybody that WhoKeys has sponsored this video. They also have physical goods now. Check that out. All these little keyboards and stuff. So while you're grabbing your copy of Windows and Office, you can also browse around and see what else they have. Thanks to WhoKeys. Now back to the video. One, HTTPS everywhere. If you ever go to a website that's HTTP, it forces you to try to go to the HTTPS version instead. Next up is Ghostery. Now Ghostery uh, does a lot of things to confuse everything that's always tracking you on the internet. So I recommend using this just to block a lot of the garbage that's tracking you. It confuses it, it, it messes with cookies, it keeps things basically clean and safe. And then the last thing, this one is um, a bit of an overkill for a lot of people because it will break a lot of websites, but this is called NoScript. And NoScript does exactly what it says. It blocks scripts from running on websites. Say you're on YouTube, you have to click on the little S and just tell it to trust YouTube. I'm saying don't trust DoubleClick, that's an ad network. Uh, but I am telling it to trust YouTube by clicking on the S that says trusted. If you want the best free antivirus, that runs in the background and can protect you from most things, uh, Kapersky is actually the one. They've moved most of their operations to Switzerland and they are not affected by sanctions. So they are still my pick for the best overall suite uh, that goes above and beyond Microsoft. Microsoft's not bad, but it doesn't really protect against malware. Now, if you are willing to pay for something, I actually like malware bytes and I've been using it on my machines, I pay for it, but you have to buy it if you want the full protection or else you won't get real time. And then what's the point? So this is something to use uh, in addition to the Microsoft, um, you know, the Microsoft virus tools. Microsoft will take care of the viruses. This will take care of the malware and it will filter websites as you're going to them and stuff like that. In the other video, I also covered uh, blocking Windows telemetry a little bit more. I didn't cover that in this video. The Windows URLs are not malicious. They're just telemetry, but I do like to block those and I block them uh, using a few different methods. So. If you want videos specifically on any of those things, let me know. This one hopefully is just a little faster and easier to follow video than the one we made a couple of days ago. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions about your security, please post them on the website and we will see you there. One last thanks to our sponsor, Hookies, who made this video possible. Get Windows, get it secured, and check out some of the other stuff they have over at hookies.com. Links are all in the top of the description.